So, you've built your first aircraft and you want to fly it. Before we start, you can pick your runway by clicking the green gear icon on the upper left. By default, there are only two runways, but you can add your own if you want. I'll make another tutorial on this later. Once you've selected your airfield, you can also choose your starting altitude and speed if you want an air start. When you're ready to start, click the launch button or the green play button in the upper left. Before you start moving, you should familiarize yourself with the controls. By default, the basic flight controls are W and S for pitch, Q and E for yaw, A and D for roll, and shift and control for throttle. Brakes can be activated with B or toggled with period. Flaps are extended with 2 and retracted with 1. By default, flaps are set to 25% when you spawn and have 4 detents. If you have lights on your plane, toggle them with L. Controls can be changed in the settings, and you can also set up HOTAS and controller inputs there. Before we take off, I'll briefly go over crosswind. By pressing F3, the arrow overlay is toggled. The blue vector seen here is the local wind. On both default runways, the wind is pointing to our left at the starting time. With a crosswind, we will have a side slip angle as we accelerate forward. When the plane is in a side slip, the tail will produce lift perpendicular to the direction the wind is moving relative to us, causing the plane to yaw towards the wind. What this means for us is that we will need to counter this yawing moment as we take off so that we don't veer off the runway. As we move forward, we will make small yaw adjustments to the left by tapping the yaw left key. The last thing to do before taking off is to adjust the pitch trim of the aircraft so we don't nose down right after releasing the pitch up key. Trimming the plane can be done either by holding X and the respective control key to trim towards, or through the controls window found in the lower right. As you're taking off, remember to lightly tap the appropriate yaw key to stay in the center of the runway. Once you're at a speed you think is reasonable for your plane to take off at, hold or tap the pitch key until your nose is off the ground. You should be up in the air just after this rotation. Retract your landing gear once you're at a decent altitude off the runway. Start retracting your flaps once you're fast enough, and adjust your pitch trim as needed. Now that we're up in the air, I'll cover various parts of the interface. Starting in the lower middle of the screen, we have the artificial horizon. Here we can see the aircraft's pitch and bank angles, as well as the true airspeed and altitude from sea level. As a side note, the units for in-game measurements can be changed in the settings. On the left of the artificial horizon, we have the readouts for angle of attack, Mach number, and load factor. On the right, we have a vertical speed readout. Next, we have the cluster on the lower left of the screen. At the top we have a compass which displays your heading relative to true north. Next we have the readouts for pitch, roll, and yaw trim levels, flap extension, and collective, which is for helicopters. In the corner we have the throttle readout. To the right of that is the control input scope. The little red dot will move around based on your pitch and roll inputs, including trim. Finally we have the engine readout. The pink outline will move corresponding to the engine's RPM, and in the center of that is the fuel flow into the engine. If you have multiple engines, multiple engine readouts will be displayed. If you click on the engine readout, it will open a window with many more details on your engine's performance. Next, we have some information on the upper left. First, we have the local world time, and under that is the elapsed flight time. Next is the local air pressure, temperature, and humidity. Depending on these conditions, you may see vortices and vapor trails coming off of your aircraft as you maneuver. Finally, we have a wind speed and direction indicator. The direction of the arrow depends on the orientation of your camera. If you enable the arrow overlay, you'll see how the arrow and wind vector line up. On the bottom of the screen, we have more readouts and some buttons. 
Starting in the left is our fuel meter, which also displays an endurance estimate based on your current fuel consumption. Next is the selected ordnance. The plane I'm flying only has guns, so it will show unarmed. If I had missiles or rockets and switched to them by pressing tab, they'd show up here. Next we have the countermeasure dispenser mode. Clicking this cycles through the type of countermeasures we dispense if we have any countermeasure dispensers. In my case, I do not. If you have countermeasure dispensers, you can activate it by pressing R. Next there are more state readouts consisting of altitude above sea level, true airspeed, indicated airspeed, angle of attack, load factor, and latitude and longitude. Continuing to the right we have our net hydraulic power and energy capacity. And finally we have a menu which is used to open some windows. First we have the autopilot. With this you can tell your plane to fly at a specific speed, altitude, and heading. While the autopilot is active, you can still use all three trim axes, which is useful since some planes require a decent amount of pitch trim to get to the desired altitude. Next is the flight window. This shows you many metrics specific to this flight, including the maximum values reached for some things, including, but not limited to, load factor, turn rate, and speed. You may have noticed the flight cost and cost per hour values. Currently they're just for show, but may have implications later. Only time will tell. Next we have the spawn menu. For now, this is used to spawn a target drone, a SAM site, or a tank. Spawning any of these will create them within the vicinity of the player at different distances depending on the entity spawned. The target drone, for example, is usually within a few kilometers of the player, while the farthest I've seen the SAM spawn is about 70 kilometers away, but your mileage may vary. The weapons window is just a different way of selecting weapons with the added benefit of being able to know exactly which weapon you're switching to. Before we go and shoot at some targets, I'll go over some camera controls. First we have the cockpit view, which is activated by pressing V. You can adjust your vertical and lateral position in the cockpit by holding and dragging the middle mouse button. Looking around can be done by holding right click and moving your mouse around. Pressing C will cycle through external camera modes, the first of which is the follow camera. The follow camera positions itself so that it always faces where you're moving. Next we have the flyby camera which stays in a fixed position and loosely tracks your plane. It's worth noting that you can adjust your camera's field of view in all external views with the plus and minus keys on your numpad. Next is the fixed camera which stays at one point relative to your plane. You can move it longitudinally and laterally based on where the camera is pointing by holding middle mouse and dragging. Finally we have the initial velocity camera, often referred to as the cinematic camera. Unlike the other external camera modes, this one is toggled by pressing 1 on the numpad. This camera will travel in a straight line at the velocity your plane had when you activated it. It will then track your plane as you move around. You can nudge this camera forwards or backwards with 8 or 2 on the numpad while it's active. You can also switch the object that your camera is focused on with F2. Shooting at a target, it's usually pretty hard to aim at them with just keyboard controls. Fortunately, we can press F1 to toggle mouse aim. Right clicking in mouse aim will zoom in, and left clicking will fire your guns. Note that in normal flight mode, spacebar is used to fire your guns. Currently, keyboard controls in mouse aim will always reflect the default controls, regardless of your current setup. For example, I have roll bound to Q and E, but mouse aim roll controls are A and D. Earlier, I briefly used the arrow overlay to observe wind direction. Here I'll describe some more uses it has. The first and most obvious is that it shows lift and drag vectors for every part being affected by the arrow model, where lift is represented by green vectors and drag is represented by red vectors. The small yellow vector near your center of mass is a unit vector that shows the direction your plane is moving in. 
The blue wind vector also reflects any vertical velocity that the wind has, which makes it great for finding spots where you may exploit ridge lift. When wind is moving towards a mountain or a hill, it will start moving upwards as it approaches it. Because the airstream now has an upwards component, your angle of attack will briefly increase until you are moving upwards with the air, practically giving you free extra lift and climb rate. Conversely, the downwind side of a mountain or hill will have downwards moving wind, which will effectively pull you down with it. In planes with a decent thrust to weight ratio, this usually isn't a problem. For heavier or weaker aircraft, you should be cautious near the downwind side of mountains. If you're not careful, vast mountain ranges such as this one can easily end your flight. If you want to quickly change the time of day, the current time controls are F11 to move forwards in time and F10 to move backwards. Note that this does not alter your elapsed flight time or the speed at which you are moving. Local weather will, however, change with time. Landing in flyout is largely the same as landing in any other flight sim. Get relatively close to the ground, slow down, and slowly descend until you reach the ground. If you're using flaps or air brakes, remember to adjust your pitch trim to counter the change in pitching moment so you don't start ascending or descending while you deploy them. To get smoother landings, I recommend positioning the camera somewhere near the wheels and making small adjustments to the pitch axis in the controls window as you descend on your final approach. 